Hey guys, today I am going to talk about investing and Magic the Gathering and why I think that it may still be a good idea, but you have to be very careful. It's not as easy as before. So before, um, before all these reprints, um, I'm talking about original Modern Masters era. Um, you could just buy Fetch Lands, buy any card in Modern. You, it wouldn't be reprinted. You were pretty sure that it's not going to get a reprint. And it would just go up, up, up in price. At one point in time, I was buying Arid Mesa for $5 each. And that was the going price for Arid Mesa. And Star City Games was buying Scarning Tarn and Misty Rainforest for $10, $12 on TCG players. So it wasn't like they were getting a special deal or it was buy listing. No, I mean, they, it was just... That was the market price. In fact, I would suggest that's even higher than the market price because they had to buy some of the vendors out. And I'm sure some of the prices were higher than they would have liked, but they bought them out and then eventually it spiked to $100. So that's a very well-known story about how Star City Games got involved in the marketplace and essentially just bought everything and anything they could find in terms of fetch lands especially the blue fetch lands. They had a monopoly on them at one point in time. So back to magic cards in general. Um, do I see Magic the Gathering being investable in the future? Sure, but the margins are much slimmer than they were in the past. Therefore, the chance of you being successful, because a lot of this does depend on luck, right? Um, if the card you invested in was reprinted, that's unlucky. If it's not reprinted, then they will go up in price. So legacy cards, uh, in terms of reserve list cards, older cards, uh, they tend to be left alone. Uh, obviously, reserve list cards have to be left alone for now. Um, so like Copy Artifact, Dual Land, Sliver Queen, Palachrone, North Star, Acid Rain, Survival of the Fittest, one of the best cards, in my opinion, of all time, uh, they will continue to go up 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 in price because why not it's not exactly like they can be reprinted now if you're looking to buy in the standard so it obviously rudy has a large large reserve list collection and he doesn't sell it because why would you sell an asset that continues to go up and for over the last 20 years, it's done nothing but go up. You would be very foolish to sell that asset. Now, if you were selling an asset that continues to be reprinted, it's probably what you need to sell. Um, I'm going to address this from the current products, um, starting from Double Masters, because it's the most prevalent in terms of people thinking of investment. I don't think Double Masters is a good investment because there's always a danger of a better version of the card. So here's the danger of any card, right? Um, and it's it's the same for sealed product. It's the same for all these master sets, ultimate masters. There's a reason ultimate masters isn't four hundred dollars a box. It's still sitting at three hundred with box topper um, because it's been replaced by something better. So if I'm Wizard of the Coast and I need to sell double masters, I need to make sure that it's significantly better than what's already on the market. Because let's say Double Masters sucks, right? Let's say Double Masters gives you half a rare, half a mythic. So let's call it half Masters. Well, no one would ever buy it at $300, $310, or Rudy's charging $300, because there's already a better product on the market called Ultimate Masters for $300. You see what I'm saying is, once you print a product and people are investing in that product, then that product will be on eBay. There'll, there'll be ample supply of it. There's ample supply of Ultimate Masters at $300, $310, $330. Why would you pay the same amount for a worse product? You would not. Therefore, Double Masters has to be only, not only a tiny bit better than Ultimate Masters, double better. Double box toppers, double rares and mythics with the same quality, right? So now you're getting two for the price of one. And let's be honest, it's not a bad set. I think it's actually pretty, I mean, it reminds me of a, a master set. It just gives you twice as much. And we will see squandered resources is now a $20 card. That's crazy. 
used to be a common, um, used to be like a very common bulk rare. Yeah, I'm reading you some Lotus Veil is a $19 card, short of the age is 54. Grendelin de Corsi, which I have one. one. Do I have two copies of this Grendelin or one? Because he is $400 now from like 50 bucks. Oh, hmm. Time Spiral is 121. So there is still lots of opportunity for you to, quote, invest in either a sealed product or a single. You just have to be much smarter about it because there's a lot more risk. There are lots of reprints. Just in the past COVID months alone, we've had Commander 2020 or, yeah, Commander 2020. We've had Mystery Booster Packs which is 2,000 reprints in them, and it's all 100% reprints. We've had Jumpstart, which is heavily reprints, um, lots and lots of reprints in Jumpstart. And we have Core 2021, when in the past, if you roll it all the way back to when Modern was firstly format, and any MTG finance person looked like a genius making any speculation, because all these speculations went up double in price, right? Like you could have picked any card, and as long as it was playable, um, it would have gone up in price. The only fret of a reprint was once a year. It was a core set. And that was the big danger of the card being reprinted. So think about this for a moment. If the only danger comes once a year of the reprints and then Commander decks, but Commander decks were relatively new back then, um... And they actually had new cards in them, <laughs> not like today's uh, decks, where it's just verbatim, just reprints. Uh, you would, I would be very, very, very concerned. Uh, and the reason I would be so concerned is there's much more danger if you're investing today than there ever has been. And that danger is not going to leave. It's only going to increase in time. So we've had Core 2021, where core sets in the past have all, have been the only major source of reprints. We've had ma that was before Modern Masters. We have Double Masters, which literally is double the reprints. Mystery Packs, Jumpstart, Commander, and Chandra's um, the one Chandra Planeswalker worth any amount of money. Chandra's Defiance is not being reprinted to the ground. You can buy that for almost pennies and a dollar from Dave and Adams right now. I was looking into it. I might buy it. I mean. Uh, I, I, it just scares me how much of this stuff is being produced. Uh, of So there's still opportunity, and I do think Zendikar Rising will be an opportunity, and here's my um, reasoning for Zendikar Rising. Zendikar Rising, should it have the fetch lands, I think everyone and their grandmother is thinking that they will have the legit fetch lands in standard. Like, I'm not talking about the masterpieces where they, they basically effed all the players, right? Hey, the fetch lines are in the set, but they're one, not even one per case. I mean, it was, what, five and there was 25 masterpieces of one and five cases and one. So one in like eight, 100 boxes, you can get a fetch line. <laughs> that doesn't sound good to me. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about expected value. Any set... So Constant Tarkiris is a very good example. Constant Tarkiris is a really bad set, but it has five fetch lands in it. And that's all it ever needed. No other card in Constant Tarkiris, as I'm going to check it up right now, is worth a penny, right? Or a dollar. Like, how many cons of Tarkiris? I guarantee, I haven't looked at this in a while, but I guarantee you there's not many cards in cons worth any money. Okay, Polluted is 26, Bloodstain 25, Wooded 25, Flooded Strand 21, Windswept 17. Ne the next card is Hardened Scales at 625, and this is like Marketplace, so this is more expensive. Dig Through Time is 495. The first Mythic is under $4, $3.76, Altered the Brood, free 69. So all, it's all ED8s, right? I mean, you look at this, it's all ED8s. Um,. It's 100% EDH. It's the five fetch lands at over the, the cheapest fetch lands windswept heath at 17 because that they got a that card got an additional reprint and one of those uh, challenger decks or whatever um, before we had them challenger decks we had something um, that was a really good investment actually I have a bunch of that that had windswept heath plus collected company yeah there's cocoa in it too. 
So when I'm looking at this, then, you know, Clever Impersonator at 250, Anna Fezzer at 228, Shurikon Dra Dragon Claw at 20, 222, and then we go all the way down and we're at $2 now and we have Ugin's Nexus and that's about it. The Vampire Token is worth more than the majority of this set. Not even the majority. The Vampire Token is worth more than like 90% of this set. And it's a common token. It looks kind of cool though. I can see why it's worth money. I mean... That's how bad this set is, yet it, the boxes did go up in price. Why did the boxes go up in price? Well, hmm. Could it have something to do with the five fetch lands in them? Yes, it does. Da -da -ding -ding -ding. So here you go. Okay. Let me just repeat this again. When you have five fetch lands in your product, that box is probably worth buying, holding on to, and it will go up in price. If you don't have very few older sets have five rares now it's very important that they're not mythics they're rares i mean very few older sets have five any cards rares mythics whatever worth over about twenty dollars a piece right on average twenty dollars a piece twenty plus dollars a piece if the enemy fetch lands are in zendikar rising absolutely this is a box that you want to buy and hold on to if the Zendikar Fetch Lands have premium, as you can see from the right-hand side, you see the collector's boosters. If they have really great-looking artwork, not by Noah Bradley, the Predator, you will see a premium. Because they're Fetch Lands. That's it. That's all you ever needed. Wow. Much wow, right? All you ever needed to make a set really powerful is five Fetch Lands. Contra Tarkir, I remember it being, you know, Siege Rhino. I, it was kind of like, uh, this is kind of a boring set. But, hey, I, I want all my prize support in Contra Tarkir because there's a 1 in 5 chance to get, at that time, like a $10 fetch line, right? But even then, you knew that if you got a bunch of fetch lands, you would do really, really well. You knew that. You absolutely knew that. This uh, kid outside got a new motorbike, and all he does is, you know, circle around the neighborhood. It's super annoying. Um, but you notice. Know you notice. Know Five fetch lands equal investable box at $100. Five fetch lands equal buy, 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 buy. It's really simple.